Yeah, for vitamin K2, um, uh, are you familiar with the different types, uh, MK7, MK4? No, not um, particularly. Okay, no. okay, so MK4 is the predominant type in animal foods, uh, in meat, in cheeses, and, and whatnot. And we actually don't absorb it at dietary doses. The MK4 at 420 micrograms, uh, we have MK7 at 420 micrograms. Um, the MK4 that is present in food does not contribute to vitamin K status. It didn't actually increase blood levels. Um, and in order to absorb it, we need very, very high doses that are achieved pretty much exclusively through supplementation. MK7, on the other hand, is the type we find in natto, which is fermented soy, and we can actually absorb it from there. Now, it's not an essential nutrient because we do convert K1. Like I said, the microbes in our gut produce some K2 um, as well. But this idea that we're getting K2 from meat just doesn't follow because we don't even absorb it um, at those doses. If you were under the impression that animal-based foods are good sources of vitamin K2 and didn't know that the predominant form of vitamin K2 in most animal products isn't even bioavailable, much like carnivore diet proponent Anthony Chafee in my debate with him, then you need to read our new review looking at whether the absence or near absence of vitamin K2, retinol, carnitine, and creatine in plant-based diets is cause for concern and whether vegans need to supplement. I've linked the paper down below.